I feel part of that whole new mind is actually reaching out, as Bill said, beyond the relation to just ourselves, but beyond that wider aspect that we are and that we carry into life. And she had such a grace in honoring the fact that she was dis displaced at the time and her mother was somewhere else and didn't have the capacity to care, but she knew where her roots are and she knew her teachings and she was an artist and she was starting to get her ground and was very excited yet very uh, humble as, as Bill was saying and just full of that grace and beauty and it was such a, a wonderful witness and uh, just fills you with so much hope because of course we're all at different parts along that continuum but it's how um, we embrace each other um, and are open to, to what's before us and those stories that are coming through that want to be heard and want to be reintegrated into now. And um, it, it, when you were speaking about that traumatic experience, I, you know, I started to think about Kai and um, how she was walking and how we're all walking with those different stories. And um, Michael, when you were speaking in the beginning about how we are you know, coming back together and carrying our stories together. I just think about that, about how the circle holds us, you know, and, and how we allow that aspect to emerge, coming back to wholeness is is sometimes the very simple things. And um, that circle of the medicine wheel always talks about how, you know, as, even though we come from different races and have different histories, that it's a time where we come back together and share and celebrate. So it's that mindfulness now that we have the gift to carry on, how do we come back together to nurture that wholeness in each other and to nurture the stories that are re-emerging and that want to be brought back into wholeness uh, so mm -hmm. that we can continue to move. But yeah, so many uh, so many thoughts, but um, I just see Kai's beautiful face. She talked, my beautiful face, you can see I have, um, she had four different um, Indigenous and ancestry in her as well as the British. So she loved the fact that she had these wonderful freckles and all these other parts, but the many faces of our stories, I guess, you know, and, and seeing that great beauty in them and how they're coming together inside of ourselves. I've got a little little story that I think reflects uh, what each of us has said in some way. In the last year, a person by the name of Cowboy Smith, who's a Blackfoot uh, in southern Alberta here, um, made a film called The Making of an Elder. And he did it with, uh, he's, he's a young man himself, and he made it with another young man who is a, an immigrant to Canada from China. And uh, it's a wonderful film, Making of an Elder, and these two young men go into Blackfoot territory and explore the land and the history of that land uh, going back uh, millennia and right through the history of it into the current situation. And it's full of, I mean, here we have these two young men, one from China coming to Canada, the other whose history is rooted in Blackfoot territory, and coming together to celebrate the land, to celebrate now, and relationships moving forward in understanding and hope. Uh, and it's a film that's full of humor, uh, the real history gently told, uh, but if ever you get a chance to see it, it's sort of an inspiration about uh, what we're talking about here. People uh, coming together cross-culturally with humility, with seeking understanding, and but rooted in understanding the land in which we live. Um, anyway, I just if people get a chance mm -hmm. to see that film and to and to experience it. It's a great example of what we're talking about. Wonderful, Bill. Mm. What comes to mind as you're uh, sharing that story is, well, I think we need to love the world in order to change the world if we're going to embark on a climate change. Uh, we need, need to love the world we want to change in order to bring about uh, the opportunities for uh, correcting the kind of uh, issues that have been generated through climate change and to see a place perhaps from many different perspectives. I, tend to see a place maybe only from one point of view, and yet as you look at a place, it has significance at so many different levels. There are different patterns at play, geologically, geographically, socially, economically, uh, psychologically, mythically. Uh, there are all many different layers, as we found in the story I opened with today around the place between. Um, that the significance of this land here um, is 
there's the geological formations that say something about the nature of the watersheds here. There's something about the geography and the sense of what lies to the north and to the south. But I think also it's been lifted up into a mythic story that carries its own significance across time as a teaching story of how to live. And I think places in that way also offer teachings around how to live with a place and how to live with each other and with ourselves. 